John here, and uh, I want to talk to you a little today about how to modify or tweak or optimize the Gantt chart. I've received a lot of questions about it, and I want to do a little video that just focused in on it. First, um, what I wanted to point out is I chose the number of columns based on a balance between um, showing you enough of the Gantt chart, but also being able to only show enough columns that you could reasonably print it on legal size paper or 11 by 17. With that said, I needed to give you a way to manipulate the Gantt chart intervals in a way that you could fit all of it within that space. So I gave you some features that I'm going to go over at first. So first you'll notice when you open up the um, project plan, it starts with a day by day, every, every um, column represents a day. So um, if you see, we have 814, 815, 816, etc. And it will always start um, from the week, the Monday of the week, starting with the minimum kind of start date on your task. So in this case, we have uh, on 817. You'll also notice I highlight the current date in green. So um, it, this project basically started a week ago. Let's say I wanted to compress the timeline to show a week for every column rather than a day. So we go over to Preferences, and under Gantt Time Interval, I would change it to 1, which it already says 1, and I change from days to weeks. And when I go back to, you'll notice, that, and I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit, we start off with 814, then we go to 821, which is seven days later. Let's say I wanted to make every column two weeks. Let's say we're doing a project two-week sprints or something like that. I could then just simply change in column B here, the one to two, so every two weeks. I'm going to go here, you'll see that I went from 814 to 828, 911. So we basically have a every other week Gantt chart. But let's say, let's change it back for a second, do one day. Let's say we wanted to view a very specific portion. Let's say we didn't want to view this chart until about, you know, like week four, so somewhere in there, like it's at uh, 9, 6, 9, 7. So let's Put a whole date override in here. So let's say I want to know the week of 9-7. I don't even have to recall whether this is a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. It doesn't matter. I just put 9-6 in here. And notice what the Gantt chart does. And I'll zoom in again so you can see this. It starts on that week, which starts on Monday 9-4. Further, it'll tell you that it is week four of your project. All right. The last thing I'll show you is, let's go to Preferences, and let's say we wanted to always default to the current week. What I would do here under Gantt Start Date is put equal now. That formula will cause the Gantt chart to always start in the current week. So even though the minimum task was in August 17, which was last week, Plus I said always start now, it shows me the current week, which starts on 821, because today is it. So that's some of the ways we can manipulate the Gantt chart intervals so that you could um, you know, still print it out, but you could focus in on the area of the plan that, that, that is relevant to your current, you know, current work activity. But let's say you say, John, that's nice. You were very thoughtful about that functionality, but I really want to expand this. How would you do this? And here's how we would do that. What you want to do is a couple things. First, I want to unhide this row five, okay? Because there's some formulas in here that copy down, basically make that milestone symbol show up at the appropriate times. The next thing I'm going to do is choose um, a bunch of columns where I want to insert. So let's say I'm going to insert this many columns. So I highlight the columns, and I'm going to do uh, 
edit. And oh, I'm sorry, let me just right click over it. I'm going to do insert. In this case, I chose 13 columns, so I want to put 13, so I can do left, right, doesn't matter, as long as I make sure it's from column S on, so I insert. Once I insert those columns, you'll notice that the blanks are, date, are, are blank. Further, you'll notice that it jumps from 829 to 830, so i got to correct all these formulas. So I'm going to highlight from S1 down to S5. And I'm going to edit copy. And on the Mac, it tells me I can Command C for copy. Then I'm going to highlight from R1 all the way over to the last column. Highlight all those cells. And paste special formulas only. It's going to copy all those formulas. Then I'm going to select. Row 5, right click and hide that again, and you'll notice now I have a Gantt chart. I can zoom out so you can see how wide it's getting, and uh, that's it. Those are all the different ways you can manipulate the Gantt chart in my project plan template for Google Sheets, as well as expand it. I hope this helps, and I hope you continue to find this useful. Thank you for subscribing and viewing.